it's Friday, so that means we talk fiction. There have been three different anthology projects there. Um, so, first, I want to point out that at the top of the blog, there is a page now for projects, and I'm going to list every project I do this year. And when it's featured in a work in progress Wednesday, I will update that project in the projects page. And that's going to be partly for anyone that's interested to see how long a project takes. Um, now the projects that are up there at the minute were all things that I sort of already had going so it's going to be a case of letting you see the, when I start a new project how long that takes from storyboarding to writing to editing to reviewing to beta reading to everything that goes into it and also for myself to look back and see what did I work quickly on what did I struggle with where were the problems so I am behind on one of my short stories I'm behind on two I'm behind on a patreon one and I'm behind on the second anthology story but Today I want to talk about why I like to do anthology stories. Um, the easiest and the right answer, of course, is that most of the anthologies I'm involved in are for brilliant causes. They are raising awareness, they're raising funds. You know, I was in Lupus Animus, that is still on sale and that still carries on donating because the money from that one goes directly to the um, animal home and then we have other projects like last year I was involved in a poetry project and that one was a limited time for sale and I think these ones this year are the same I think they're all going to be available for a limited time and then you get the stories back and you can either include it in a work of your own or publish it somewhere else um, but there is a second reason for doing anthologies and it's a selfish reason and that doesn't make you a bad person if you decide you want to do more anthologies for that reason but let's be honest about it if you're not very well known and you get in an anthology with people that are better known then what happens is, of course, their readers are going to read your work as well as their own. And it won't necessarily mean that every single person will rush out and buy your book, but it does mean that when you're doing an event, they're more likely to come over and talk to you, more likely to come over and take a look at what you've got to offer. And it's a good way of getting your name spread to a wider audience. Now the, the thing with anthologies is that most of them have a theme and we will take the first anthology I've done this year um, which is waiting to see if that story is going to be accepted and it's not a genre I write it's romance, it's you know quite a clean romance, no sex, no violence. Um, so. The people that I'm in that book with are all people that are appearing at a certain signing with me, if I get into it. Um, and their readers, a lot of them will enjoy different genre. Now what it does is it gives us all an even playing field. And that lets people not only judge, do I like this, do I like that, but it lets them judge if they like your writing style. Um, we all have slightly different styles, we have different ways we word things, we, you know, you can tell the difference. If you were to pick up a book by Tolkien and a book by Jane Austen, you wouldn't need to know the title, 
you wouldn't need to know anything about them You'd, but after two pages you would be able to tell the difference wouldn't matter where you picked it up in the book because the styles are very different and partly sometimes that's to do with genre it's to do with where you where you are in the world where you write what time period you're writing all that affects it but it's your voice how they hear you and an anthology gives you a really really good opportunity to speak to other people and to let them think oh you know something I quite liked reading that that was really easy to read or I could visualize the way they wrote things really easily and that's a really positive because it means that they might just take a chance on you even if you write in a genre that's not theirs not their comfort zone and we all have to step out of our comfort zone sometimes I love reading everything just about you know but occasionally I, I studied English literature at uni and I had to read some 17th and 18th century literature which oh my god there was one and it, I, I can't bear somebody to fold a page back in a book and yet I slung a certain book across the room twice it still has sticky notes in it because I can't bear to open it again just to take the sticky notes out <laughs> So, yeah, we are, we have to struggle sometimes to push through and see if we like different things, to try different things. And some you'll love, some you won't, some you'll decide, I'm never going to read another book like that again. But it, everything is so competitive now, you really do have to try everything you can to get your name out there, to get that little bit further. So, if you're an aspiring writer... If you're thinking about, you might want to write at some point, but you're not sure. You know, my first my first published work wasn't a book of my own. It was being published in somebody else's anthology. It was being published in two online journals. And the other brilliant thing about that is it lets you know you are good enough. Because somebody else thinks you're good enough as well. Right, I'm going to tie this up for this week because I have to get to the day job and I'm hoping the snow's just about cleared up outside because I'm filming this on Wednesday as usual so that I can edit it tomorrow. So take care and I'll be back seeing you on Sunday with a cup of coffee in my hand. Um, but talk more about writing next week. Bye.